everybody welcome back to the channel thank you for joining uh, today we're looking at episode 8 in the JMRI series and I'm excited for this one that we're going to talk about routing cars and schedules so the nice thing about JMRI is that you have the option to have your cars routed or you have the option to not have your cars routed so before we show the JMRI let's real quick take a look here and see what we have so we have uh, some population here on the route. As you can see from our previous video, we populated this train. I have since moved some of the cars off of that train and put them in the yard. Uh, but here we have on track three, we have cars waiting to go on the interchange train the next time. On track two, we have cars waiting to go to the local, which will head over here to Localville. And from Localville, according to our switch list, which if we get a chance, we'll print off and see what it looks like. You know, we might be picking some or none or all of these up. And then we will bring those back to the yard. Uh, I don't really think we're going to operate in this video, but I will at least uh, hopefully talk about kind of how all this interacts. Uh, but then, of course, the cars will come back to the yard and get put onto different tracks. And then we have one lonely boxcar here waiting on track one uh, because he's going to get picked up by some through trains. And then naturally the interchange train is waiting to come in. So when the interchange train would come in, he would work his way around and then he would come over here and drop his cars off on track four, pick up some cars on track three and then head right back out to his staging yard. Okay. So all of this right now is set up without any car routing. So you might be wondering, well, how is it that JMRI moves cars if we don't have any car routing? So let's actually talk about that. So I'm going to bring JMRI over here. So we're going to go to Operations Pro and Cars. And the first thing I want to show you are the default car loads. So JMRI has uh, default car loads, empty and loaded. Okay. And when you use default car loads for JMRI, it does not uh, route a car with one of these loads. Now the car will still move. Uh, but it's not necessarily going to move with any particular destination in mind. So for example, when we go pick up a car from Localville, uh, for example, that car is sitting in Localville. If we go pick that up, our train is going to take it with us and it's just going to take it to the next destination. And if there's an acceptable track at the next destination, it might drop it off there. There's no real direction or purpose. Um, but you can still actually influence and control the car movements quite a bit, even if you don't technically have the cars routed. In JMRI, routing a car means that you are specifically sending that car to a particular destination uh, or all even like a particular destination and track. Uh, so if you use default loads and empties, you are not getting that. But the good news is I have an entire route called the North Texas Beltline. If you've watched my channel, you've seen some videos. Uh, that entire route is built in JMRI and it only uses default loads and empties and it gets tons of car movements. But the difference is it is kind of flying by the seat of its pants. There's there's no real guarantee, no real way to predict kind of where a car is going to go. So uh, still lots of fun though and gives lots of good car movement. So let's talk about how you can structure JMRI to actually accomplish this without car routing. So I'm going to go to Operations Pro. I'm going to go to Locations. And we're going to look at the um, interchange yard. So the local on this route runs from the interchange yard. So I'm going to click edit so we can see the spurs or yard tracks. So we have um, classification interchanges where all the cars are exchanged. So the local runs out of track two. And you'll notice under load, it has a eight. That means there are eight load restrictions. Now, right now you might be thinking, oh, hold on a second. There's only supposed to be two loads, empty and loaded and you would be correct so let's go see what's going on when i click edit and i go and look at this the uh, interchange track all by itself we have this except only eight loads so let's click on this and now we get this menu so what you'll notice is that the loads are tied to the particular car type and that is because i hit accept only and then I hit use car type and load. Okay. So it has box car and empty, box car loaded. That means a box car could have either of those. Hopper grain can only be empty. Reefer mechanical only empty. Reefer only empty. A food tanker can only be empty. A food tanker could also be loaded. 
and a gas tanker could only be loaded. So this means that it will never accept a car on this track that doesn't fit these load restrictions. So that means I'll never get an empty gas tanker. And the reason we do that is because the spurs in the town that is served by this track only accepts these particular car types and loads. So you want to make sure that your yard tracks where you're holding cars to be sent on locals, you want to make sure that your yard tracks and your classification interchange tracks have the proper load restrictions. If you don't have the proper load restrictions, then what will happen is you will get a car like a empty gas tanker that will sit here and it will never leave this track. And once or twice is not such a big deal, but you know, if you run a bunch of operating sessions over a long period of time, you can get enough cars that are kind of stranded there that will actually fill the yard up or that one track up and you won't be able to use that track. And that's when you have a big problem. So it's important to go and check your local uh, and where it runs. So for us, that would be Localville. We would go and we would uh, pull up Localville. So let's do that real quick. And you would go and you would check for the car types and you would check their loads. So here you can see our spurs. They have load restrictions. You would click on those spurs and then check your load restrictions right here. And you would probably want to write that down. Okay. And then that way, when you go back to your yard track, which for us is yard track two, you can go into the load restrictions and you can make sure that those load restrictions match what you have on your spurs in Localville. Okay. That's extremely important, but this is how you route cars in JMRI without actually having JMRI route them. It just kind of, you're kind of telling JMRI, it's like putting bumpers when you're going bowling. Hey, you can't put a car there, but you can put it over there. And so it'll do that. Okay. This works just fine. You get lots of nice car movement when you use this. It's very straightforward. It's not too difficult to program. It's fantastic. Okay. All right. Now, uh, for us though, I want to talk about schedules. So I'm going to kind of move us away from the locomotive just so we don't hear that in the background quite as much. So let's go back to JMRI and actually talk about uh, getting these schedules made up because schedules are how you do route cars. And so this is where when a car gets picked up, uh, you're going to tell JMRI, hey, once you pick this car up, um, I want you to ship it uh, to any one of these particular places. And then it will do that. All right. And you'll give it a potential list of places it can go, type of loads it can take, uh, and then you'll have a lot more control. So I'm going to show you kind of how this works. So the way this works is you're going to click on a spur, uh, which for us will be box ink. And I just realized before I do that, I need to go make one change. Since we're going to use a schedule, I don't want any load restrictions. So I'm going to go turn these load restrictions off because if I don't, then it's not going to let me do what I want. Okay. Yeah. So that's fine. All right. Bear with me for just a second. Let's go back to Localville. All right. So let's talk about Box Inc. You can see that I've already built a schedule for Box Inc. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to delete it real quick. That way we can start over and I can show you how this works. Okay. So at Box Inc., if you want to make a schedule, schedules give you all kinds of more control and they allow you to route cars to specific places and also to receive them from specific places. I'm going to click add and it gives me this menu. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the schedule a name. So we're going to call this Box Inc. Okay. Not bad. And then I'm going to click add schedule. So now we have a schedule called Box Inc. And Box Inc. only takes box cars. If you took more car types, you would have a bigger list down here in the bottom left. But I'm going to click Box Car and I'm going to click Add Car Type. So you see, this gives me lots of options. So let's talk about these. Um, now, actually, before I do that, let's talk about sequential versus match. Sequential means that if I add multiple car types or the same car multiple times, it will try to deliver cars with the specific loads and things in the exact order that you put them in. So this gives you incredible control over the sequence of cars that come to an industry. Okay. I personally don't ever use this. I like to use match match mode means uh, that you give it a list of cars and car types, and it will just deliver whichever one 
is fitting at the time. It does not particularly follow any set order. It really just depends on what it has available and uh, what kind of spurs will take that car load. So uh, for us, let's talk about the box cars. So you have random. This is where you can set how often uh, it will skip this one. So like if it selects it and then you have 50 chosen, then there's a 50-50 chance that if it does actually select it, it'll ignore it and therefore leave it. All right, so you can turn that on or off. I typically just keep that off unless I have certain car types or loads that I don't want delivered as often. Then you have delivery. This is when you can choose a day for the car to be set out. You have road. So this is where you can restrict it to an individual railroad. Uh, this will only allow you to populate with uh, railroads that uh, you have uh, cars on the layout that belong to that railroad. So I can only choose these five because these right now are the only five railroads where I have a car, a box car specifically, uh, on the route. So uh, all my box cars are one of these five railroads, which is why I can only choose those. Okay. But as I add more cars, I could choose more. Then you have receive. This is where you choose the load that comes in. So I added a few, uh, but you might be wondering why are we seeing more than just EL? And the reason is these are custom loads. So I have electronics, lumber, uh, empty paper and tools. So let's go real quick before we finish this up. Let's sidetrack over to the cars menu and let's talk about how we got those car loads. All right. So I'm going to just save that real quick. We'll come back to it and I'm going to get out of the spur track, get out of the location and I'm going to go to operations pro and cars. So to add a custom load to a car, you click on the car type. Uh, actually, you can just go to add car. Let's go to add car. And right here where it says load, right there, bingo. You can change the car type, so I can change it to a box car. And for load, I can hit edit. And then you can have your options to add. Okay, so I can add whatever I want. Let's do um, clothes. Sounds good. So we can add that. Okay, so now in this drop down menu, you'll see all the loads. We have empty, loaded, and then all the custom loads I've added. Now, you might be wondering why I added a custom load of empty. The reason for that is because this is how you get your program to route empty cars for you. So you create a load that you call empty, MTY, and then you can actually change its load type to an empty. So it will show as empty. But since it's custom, it will still route that car for you, which is fantastic. It will give it a destination and it will tell you where it's going like where it's going to finally end up. So that kind of helps you know, if, especially if you, have, if you have like a big route, it kind of helps you know where things are going, which is really helpful. So anyways, that's how you add custom loads. Let's go back to our box ink. Get that over here. So box ink, we go to edit and then back to the schedule. So edit the schedule. All right. So we were here with custom loads. Let's say we're going to receive empty and we're going to ship Electronics. Okay, so Box Inc. makes electronics. So that's perfect. So anytime that JMRI finds a box car that's empty, it's going to choose all the places it could send it a yard, staging, a spur, and it's going to ship it there. So for us, it might choose this industry. So now the moment that a box car gets picked up anywhere on the route and it gets a custom load added to it, if that custom load is empty, it's going to decide where it's going to go. And so it's going to decide from pickup where its final destination is. And that's how it gets routed. So for example, it's going to choose box ink. And now we know when you pick up a box car from the Canadian national interchange, that it's going to work its way over to box ink eventually. Okay. Here on the destination, you can choose uh, where you're going to ship it to. So if I want to ship this particular load specifically to some area on the railroad, I can do that. So if I only want to ship it east, I can do KCS to east staging. All right, just for example. Um, I personally don't worry about this, but it's an option. And then once you choose a destination, you can choose a track. So if I do uh, like the staging yard, actually, that's not a bad example. Let's do Localville. See, I can choose a track that accepts this car type, but I don't want to ship it to Localville because we're picking it up in Localville. So I'm just going to leave that blank. Uh, but it can ship custom loads to staging tracks and then pick up. This is where you choose which day of the week to have the car picked up. So if I only want it picked up on Wednesday, I choose that and it will never pick this car up except for Wednesday. And then hits just keeps track of how many times it chooses this uh, schedule item and wait is where you can set a hold. So if I do one, 
That means if it calls for this pickup, it will actually see that the weight is on one and it will uh, make this car sit here one more time. And so the next time it calls for this car, then it will uh, actually have the car get picked up. So this is how you can simulate holds when you have cars sitting on spurs. So all my guys who love car cards, that one's for you. All right, that's how you get to do the holds. And so, you know, you can choose to receive whatever you like. So we can receive paper. Uh, let's see, we can ship empty after that. You can either, sh you can even ship another loadout if you want to. Lots of options, okay? Then you hit save schedule. And now you have schedule. So schedules are only added to spurs. But here's the cool thing. When you make another spur, if you have another spur that uses the same schedule, you can actually go to a different spur and you can choose a schedule that you previously made. So I could choose Box Inc. if I wanted to. Now, I won't for this one because they don't take the same car types, but I could, for example. So like a good example of that is if you make a schedule for like team tracks, then you can use the same schedule for all your team tracks. All right. So as far as making schedules, that's the basics. Okay. You go to a spur, you click edit, then you click add for optional schedule, and then you build your schedule. Okay. This allows you to have a lot more control over uh, where cars go and, uh, and all that kind of stuff, like where they get picked up and what they carry. But you also need to remember to make custom loads if you want to do schedules. Okay. So this will give your cars more purpose. You'll know where they're going to go for their final destination and you'll be able to better track uh, kind of how they're going to get there. So it helps you be a little more informed about where a particular car is going. Plus it allows you to make extremely specific moves. So if you want to have a box car take electronics from one industry to another every single time, uh, you can set that up. And then whenever a box car is loaded with electronics, it will only go to that one industry that you specify. And so you can create these scripted car movements just like guys do with car cards. And you can do that with schedules. All right. Uh, that's why car routing in Jamarai is lovely. Schedules takes a lot of time to create. Uh, but when you do them correctly and you set up some robust scheduling, uh, you can get some beautiful, beautiful things. I'm going to leave this video for here because you're getting kind of long. I will have more info on scheduling in the future because there's a lot more to it. But as far as the basics for getting it set up and how to put it in, this is it. Okay, so later on when I have some longer form videos, we'll talk in more detail about how to actually uh, go into much more detail and make much larger schedules. All right, so appreciate it. Thank you guys for joining. Make sure to uh, comment, like, share, and subscribe. And uh, on our next video, video nine, we're going to actually print a switch list and we're going to see about uh, talking about kind of how these car movements and stuff will work. So thanks guys, stay tuned and we will see you soon. Adios.